What is up guys and you asked for it and in this video I'm going to show you guys the secrets of how I edit any video in Adobe Premiere from beginning to end. So for the purpose of this video and my own client's confidentiality I decided to pick my own YouTube videos to break down from beginning to end. And yes, I'm using Adobe Premiere 2018 because I have a really slow laptop and apparently the 2019 version does not work really well with my graphics card, but I'll talk about that in another video. If you guys want to see how I edit 4K videos on this slow laptop, let me know in the comments. And if you don't know who I am yet, my name is Peter and give me a like and thumbs up and comment what kind of more videos that you guys want to see because I'm going to start making videos that you guys want to see. So. Straight off the bat, this is my basic timeline here. As you can see, we have an adjustment layer. We have layers on top for B-roll, couple text overlay animations on top, as well as your basic background music. So first off the bat, what I do with any project, doesn't matter if it's a client, if it's a $5,000 video, or it's my own YouTube videos, I have a couple of project folders. Usually what I have is I have a footage, F for footy, and I have my raw clips. And in this case, I was a little lazy, but I also have a clip that is usually labeled A for assets. And those are my usually things like my intro, as well as my outro screen, as you can see right here. So the purpose of doing these is that you can just drag and drop them straight into your timeline, especially if it's like a company's logo or a company, they have their own intro video. What you're trying to do is speed up the video process. If you have something like an intro that you always use for every video, instead of remaking it, all you need to do is drag that, pop that bad boy right into the timeline, and there you go, and it's ready to use. So once I make that folder, and I have my raw clips, what I like to do is I click this list view, and I click and order by name. As you can see here, depending on what camera you use for this footage is labeled DSC underscore. That is what the Nikon is labeled as. So I shift click in the order that it's labeled in, drag it all the way onto my timeline. What I would do is I would drag those clips, plop them straight onto my timeline. And how I initially take the clips on the right and turn it into the clips on the left is that I go through it once really quick on double speed. So I play it, first camera, and I press L, steps, when you, when you consider, like and I play it in two times camera speed, camera and I look at if the clips, the talking portion dialogues are correct, and whether or not the footage that I use are either blooper clips that I don't need or actually clips that I'm actually going to put on the timeline. And for the rough cuts, I'm not actually listening for a story. I'm actually looking for taking out all the bloopers as well as taking out the empty space. As you can see here, the empty space here, those are not actually going to be the video that you guys see. So my mental note is that if I see empty space within a certain video or certain clip, go straight to it. I'm going to cut this out. So I just cut, cut, cut that out. And I do that pretty much throughout the whole entire clip. If I see any white spaces, as well as I click M for a marker onto the direct clip if it's a certain reminder. So in this case, it was a certain reminder for me to put a certain title screen on it. And that is how I chop up dialogue. So just to recap, because it does get a little confusing, is that I put my timeline in sequential order. So then the order that I first filmed all the way to the very last video where I say peace out. And I just chop out all the blank spaces and go through it at two times speed. Once I have it chopped up and I have the two times speed and got pretty much the main gist of the video, what I would do again is I would actually play through the video, run through it, and see if there's actually a flow with it. And this just comes with timing and editing hundreds of videos and seeing if there's a decent flow, meaning the pacing of how I'm talking as well as having any needed overlay that I need to. So once I have my A-roll camera down and I have all those edits, what I like to do on top is to have B-roll. So I have a, I usually have a subfolder in my project over here, labeled B, and these are all my B-roll clips. So what I do is once I play off the rough cut in these videos over here, I'm like, oh, I can use a little B-roll clip to emphasize my story. Double click here, 
let's see what footage I use. Let's see, go here, in point, out point, drag that on top, plop that bad boy around top of my timeline. And then now I have B-roll. Once, on top of that, once I have B-roll, then I like to add things like, simple things like title screens. And if it's a simple YouTube video, nothing really fancy. I just put like a, a wipe in the beginning and a wipe to end the, the clip. And the very second last thing I do is I like to find music. So it doesn't really matter what music or audio there is unless it's, even when it comes to like corporate videos, essentially what background music is to fill out the awkward white noise. And if you're not a great talker like myself, I like to put a little bit of background music for my, for my videos. So I like to put them, I click on audio clip and I put it at 25.5 negative decibels. Sometimes you can do negative 30. And people use the pen tool to change the levels of the audios. But if you're lazy like me, all I really do to start these and end these is I go to constant gain as well as the fade effect. The fade effect is one of the easiest audio tools that I use instead of having the pen tool because all I do is I literally just go to the very end of it and there's a little fade out. You can always film something and not get ripped off. Cheers. And I have the, obviously the very last clip is my already pre-made outro. And the very last thing, once I have my entire timeline edited from the rough cut to the clips, then I like to play around with things like transitions, any kind of animations, text and image overlay as the very last thing. And as the very, very last thing is I like to do my color correction at the end. Because if you don't have a powerful laptop or PC, color correcting and then, then doing the first cut, that is when you'll run into things like dropping frame rates when you're editing in the playback because your computer can't handle it and overall freezing and lagging when you're scrubbing through your timeline. I color grade at the very end. So in order for me, primarily, how I color grade isn't super fancy. I literally go to my color tab and then I go to my uh, Lumetri scopes and I can see if you don't know what I'm actually doing here, I do have a video, I'll link it in the description or comments below of how I actually color grade in full depth. But I look at my overall, how is my video exposed? Click curves, sometimes I like to match that, sometimes I don't. Pull up my, my uh, blacks and whites, give my color a little bit of vibrance, saturation, play around with the contrast and exposure, as well as a little bit of color wheels and fix a little bit of white balance. This is a different type of video that I just want to give you guys a little behind the scenes looks of how I actually go from beginning to all the way to the end of a typical Adobe Premiere project file from rough cut to revisions to second round, third round, and final revisions. And it doesn't matter what video that I'm editing, I apply these principles and methodology to all my videos. So if you didn't get the gist, I'm going to re repeat these in a more less multitasking manner where first I would take my raw footage that I have, drag it all into the timeline and quickly scrub through on two times speed, figure out where all the empty spaces, which clips I need and I don't need. And then I cut together my storyline, put in my B-roll clips, I put in my music and then I do my color grading at the end, and that is my basic, let's say a basic YouTube edit that you would say in terms of my workflow. My name is Peter, and I edit YouTube videos for a living, for myself, for other people, and for other influencers and organizations. And if you want more of these videos, like how do you edit 4K on a computer that can't handle 4K? Let me know in the comments, I'll make that video. You're watching a Broke Visionary Collective where we I'll start with nothing, but you can always create something. Cheers.